Hi, I'm Nathan Ritter from CardioGage.com. Welcome to the world of ECG interpretation, level one. Let's get right into it. This is the world of ECGs. First, a couple of notes about the format. You're going to see green boxes here that has level one information in them. There are orange boxes. Those are the ones that are going to have the level two information and then red boxes. These have the level three information. When you're on level one, you can't see what's in the orange or red boxes to keep the information more manageable. Second, the format that I go through the ECG information on is rate. Then there's a section on rhythm, axis, hypertrophy, bundle branch block, signs of ischemia and infarct, and then everything else. That's how I read ECGs myself and how I teach people to read ECGs in that order. Let's start with the rate, the easiest thing. You can calculate the rate by counting the number of QRS complexes in 10 seconds and then multiplying by 6. A standard ECG is 10 seconds. Let's do that here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times 6 is 42 beats per minute. So you can do the rate that way. And then the second way is to count the number of boxes between QRS complexes and then divide 300 by that number. So it's the medium sized boxes here. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in this case. 300 divided by 7 is about 42 beats per minute. Basically, I've memorized these numbers here. How many boxes equals what rate? So six boxes, 300 divided by six is 50 beats per minute. 300 divided by five, 60 beats per minute. 300 divided by four, 75. 300 divided by three is 100. 300 divided by two, 150. So generally when I do the rate, I'm doing this second method here because it's faster. All right, let's talk about normal sinus rhythm, the easiest heart rhythm. It's defined as a rhythm that originates from the sinus node over here, which is in the right atrium of the heart. And it's got a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. So the sinus node controls the heart rhythm, and it's controlled itself by neurological innervation of the heart and circulating hormones. So, for example, if you're running or you're upset or something, your heart rate will be faster. And if you're asleep or at rest, it'll be slower. Let's look at the different parts of the ECG during sinus rhythm. When the sinus node depolarizes over here, it starts the P wave. And this is a P wave here. After the sinus node depolarizes, then the atria go. And that creates the P wave itself here. Then conduction progresses through the AV node, this orange thing. And that would be right at the tail end of the P wave. You can see it there. Then conduction goes through the His bundle, the blue part here, which is specialized conduction tissue. And that's right here at the start of the QRS. And then the ventricles depolarize. And that creates the QRS, which is this thing here. So normal sinus rhythm is going to have a P wave before each QRS. And there they are. And here are the QRSs. Pretty straightforward. Sinus bradycardia is just sinus rhythm with a rate less than 60 beats per minute. So you can see here, this is a slow rate. This is sinus bradycardia. Sinus tachycardia, the rate's greater than 100 beats per minute. And you can see here, that the distance between these QRSs is a little bit less than three boxes, so the rate's probably somewhere around 110 beats per minute in this one. All right, let's talk about sinus rhythm with first degree AV block. First degree AV block is when conduction is slowed through the AV node and the PR interval is longer than it would be otherwise. So this is the PR interval from the very start of the P wave to the very start of the QRS. If this interval is more than 0.2 seconds, then that's a first degree AV block. And 0.2 seconds turns out that's equal to five little boxes. Each one of these little boxes here 
is 0 0.04 seconds. So 0 0.04 seconds times 5 equals 0 0.2 seconds. So if it's more than five little boxes, then that's first degree AB block. In this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, approximately seven little boxes. So that's 0 0.04 times seven equals 0 0.28 seconds. So that means you got first degree AV block. PACs. This shows conducted PACs and block PACs. Let's start with a conducted PAC. PAC stands for premature atrial contraction, and that means that there's a spot in the atria that controls the rhythm for a moment um, when it's not supposed to. So an ectopic or out-of-place focus depolarizes instead of the sinus node here. The PAC beat in this ECG is this one right here. It comes early. So there's a beat, another one, another one. These are happening right on time, and then boop, an early one. So this is a conducted PAC because the PAC happens, and then there's a QRS right afterwards. So that PAC makes it through and depolarizes the ventricles. A blocked PAC is similar in that the PAC goes off, but then it doesn't conduct through the AV node and it gets blocked. So you've got a P wave and a QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS. Then there's a P wave here, and there's no QRS. So that's a block PAC, and that often causes a pause after it occurs. On to atrial fibrillation, a very common heart rhythm problem. Something like 6 million Americans have it, and if you do any clinical work, you're bound to bump into somebody with atrial fibrillation at some point. In atrial fibrillation, there are lots of different little foci in the atria that are going off, and it's chaotic. There are also locations in the pulmonary veins that go off as well. And that creates a situation where there aren't really any clear P waves. You just kind of see a wiggling of the baseline, kind of like that. Let's look at slow response over here. So there's no real clear P wave activity, it's just kind of wiggling. And then the QRSs are happening relatively slowly, less than 60 beats per minute. So that's atrial fibrillation with slow response. Over here, we got atrial fibrillation with rapid response, and it's the same thing with the wiggling baseline. But then the QRSs are happening more frequently at a rate of greater than 100 beats per minute. There can be atrial fibrillation with a controlled response, and that would be if the rate were between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Atrial flutter. Atrial flutter is occurring in the atria because there's a reentrant rhythm in the atria. It creates a repeating P wave that looks like a sawtooth, which is the hallmark of this. So there's a sawtooth pattern in the inferior leads, and that's what I'm showing here with the green tracing over the P waves here. Atrial flutter is quite common. It's treated similarly to atrial fibrillation, but it's a lot easier for the electrophysiologist to take care of the atrial flutter and stop it. They can do a procedure where they break the cycle in the right atrium, and then that stops the atrial flutter from coming back. While you see the sawtooth pattern leads 2, 3, and AVF, in the other leads it doesn't look like a sawtooth. So over here in V1, you can see the P waves are happening. There's no sawtooth, but they're all happening. And in this case, it's a rate of about 300 beats per minute. Since there's one flutter wave for every uh, medium-sized box, and that's typical for atrial flutter, Oftentimes, there will be two to one conduction. What that means is that there will be two flutter waves for every QRS, and over here, that's what's demonstrated. There's a QRS for every other P wave, so that means that the ventricular rate is going to be out 150. So it's very common to have atrial flutter with two to one conduction and a rate of 150 beats per minute. If you see an ECG with a rate of 150 beats per minute, Think about atrial flutter. There's a solid chance that's what it is. All right, let's talk about ventricular arrhythmias here. Just one thing in that topic for the level one. PVCs. That's a premature ventricular contraction. And those come from the ventricle. So a little spot in the ventricle is going to go off and create the beat instead of the sinus node. 
you can see these beats are happening. There's a P wave before each QRS, and then here, all of a sudden, there's no P wave and there's just a QRS and it comes early. The QRS is very different morphology or shape than when it's a sinus beat. It tends to be wider and then the T wave tends to be large and in the opposite direction. So when you see that the morphology of a beat is very different from the sinus beat, then there's a good chance that's a PVC.